Over the past several years, many people have doubted the protection offered by natural immunity. In today's show, we're going to break down a new study comparing head-to-head -head natural immunity compared to immunity offered by mRNA-based vaccines. This is the first study of its kind because it actually accounts for rates of either reinfection or breakthrough infections during the Omicron wave. And essentially what these scientists found in this study was published in the journal Lancet, which, as many of you know, is not a low-tier, low-impact journal. This is a very highly regarded journal. The title of the paper is Protection from Previous natural infection compared with mRNA vaccination against SARS-CoV-2 infection and severe COVID-19 in the country of Qatar, a retrospective cohort study. What I love about this study, as I mentioned, is it is accounting for the protection during the Omicron wave, because it's important to recognize that the circulating virus that is out there right now is in fact Omicron. So when we're comparing natural immunity compared to vaccinated immunity back in 2020 and 2021, that's not really relevant to today because we know that there was a significant shift in the mutation of a new variant around Thanksgiving of 2021. So we covered many of those natural infection compared to vaccine protection studies from Israel and the one in the CDC reported, uh, I think it was June of 2021 in Kentucky. So again, this is unique because they track data between the months of February 2020 and May of 2022. So this is really important. So like many of you, you got COVID in 2020 or early 2021, and you probably thought, well, I'm young, I'm healthy. Why do I need to get the additional protection from the vaccine? And that was my thinking as well. I survived the virus. I didn't die. I had a backache. I was tired for a few days in November of 2020. So why did I want to get a vaccine? I've survived the big, bad pandemic. So what's the upper, ben upper bound benefit or additional benefit and the risk associated with me getting a vaccine? That was my risk benefit calculation based upon the fact that at the time I was 38 years old and the first infection was pretty mild. So I didn't think I was going to die getting it again if I already have natural immunity, specifically as this paper talks about. What's unique about natural immunity is you get immunity in the mucosal tissues where the virus replicates and enters your body in the first place. In contrast, and this is exactly what the paper talks about, when you get the vaccine, it's not a mucosal vaccine. You're, remember, you're getting an injection in the deltoid and that is triggering your B cells and your T cells to make immunologic memory just to the spike protein. When you see the whole virus, remember SARS-CoV-2 is an, an RNA uh, coronavirus, single-stranded. Well, guess what happens? Uh, there, there's multiple proteins and immunologic targets that your immune system remembers. Specifically, the mucosal tissue remembers that when you see that virus again, it's more likely to mount a preemptive immunologic response so that you don't get severely ill or die when you get reinfected. In fact, what the study found is there was 2,300 so-called reinfections in the natural immunity group. Only two of those were severe and no one died. In contrast, in the various vaccination arms, where they were comparing the Moderna arm to the Pfizer arm, there was about 4,200 breakthrough infections in both of those different arms of the study. Five, of, five subjects who had been fully vaccinated ended up getting severely ill with COVID. No one died in either one of those arms. But it's important to recognize that because natural immunity is more broad, you're creating immunologic memory to the entire virus, not just the spike protein. Which leads me to question, why did we ever doubt natural immunity? Remember, I've shared this article with you many times in, I think it was June of, of 2008, NPR, National Public Radio, was talking about how in survivors of the 1918 Spanish flu, they actually still had immunologic memory to the Spanish flu some 90 years later. And this was when our, our journalism wasn't so politically aligned or controversial. And this future piece talked about all the studies that had, had suggested that immune systems are really elaborate and complex, and they can remember uh, antigens from pathogens that they were exposed to many, many years ago. But yet when COVID hit, many people, those same people that would have shared that article about 12 years ago are now dismissing the protection offered from natural infection. I had many family members who are in the healthcare space who were just bewildered by the fact that that I would just only depend upon my immune system. Like, oh my gosh, you're not getting vaccinated even though you already survived COVID. Well, I hope it's good enough. You could die. It's like, wait, why would I die the second time, right? When I have a head start, when I'm exposed to it because of the mucosal immunity. Remember, when you see the whole virus, you're creating immunologic memory at the very site where the virus enters your body and replicates in the mucosal tissue, in the nasal pharynx area, in the upper airway. Whereas when you're getting the vaccination, and I'm not dismissing the vaccines, but you're getting it systemically in the arm. It's not targeting the, the site in the body where the virus enters. And this is why, if you look here, 
We're going to talk about this figure here. This is direct comparison of the rates of infection from just natural immunity compared to vaccine immunity. We're going to talk about this figure, but first I want to welcome you back as always, friends. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hitting that like button. Thank you for sharing this video with a friend who might benefit from this. That really goes a long way. When we talk about these topics, you know that the platforms don't like us talking about this. So we really depend upon you sharing this content so we can get this information out there. This is scientific studies that people shouldn't know about. Secondarily, you might notice I'm wearing my Eat Like Your Life Depends On It t-shirt. We have many great t-shirts over at myoscience.com to inspire meaningful conversations to help you connect with people that are like-minded in your community. We have another shirt that we just made called Lift Like Your Life Depends On It. Lift weights, that is. We have another shirt called Make Natural Immunity Count Again. We have many t-shirts to help spread health-inspiring messages over at myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C.com, myoscience.com. Save with the gold podcast if you want to inspire meaningful conversations with people at your gym, your grocery store, your workplace, or in your family or peer group. Again, save using the code podcast at checkout. But for some reason, we've been dismissive of natural immunity, and I think this is one of the seven or eight studies actually showing that in fact, natural immunity is protective. And let's enumerate that protection right now. If you look here at the cumulative SARS-CoV-2 infection incidents, comparing directly Moderna or Pfizer vaccine to the people who only have natural immunity, there's a, it's literally cut in half, meaning that the people who have natural immunity had half the incidence of SARS-CoV-2 infection over the course of this study. And let's further talk about that in table two. Table two is a hazard ratio incidence of SARS-CoV-2 infection in severe, critical, or fatal COVID-19. Now, if we look here, comparing natural immunity compared to Pfizer and then natural immunity compared uh, to, to Moderna in a per population uh, incidence rate, so this is per 100,000 people. The, the protection of natural immunity, it led to only 18.1 infections per 100,000. Now, that number doesn't mean anything unless you know this number right here, which is the, num the incidence rate of infections from individuals who had been vaccinated from the Pfizer vaccine. And that incident rate is 37.1. So it's literally double. So what that means is, in fact, natural immunity works. In fact, it's about twice as good in terms of protecting people from getting reinfected uh, compared to vaccination al alone. Now, that incidence rate is a little bit different for the Moderna vaccine. Uh, in the natural infection group comparing the Moderna vaccine, we have 16.7 infections per 100K people versus 32 infections per 100K people in the folks that had the Moderna vaccine. Now, the higher the number, that means more infections per population. So the lower the number would indicate a, a greater protection. And that is in fact what they found. And they adjusted for all sorts of things. For example, some of you might be saying, well, you know, people who have already had a COVID infection are less likely to test for COVID because they've already had it. Well, the authors acknowledge that. And guess what? They controlled for that in this particular study. And after controlling for that, guess what? They still found that previous natural infection was associated with lower incidence of SARS-CoV-2 infection, regardless of the variant than mRNA primary series vaccination. YouTube and all the sensors over at Spotify, I'm reading to you from The Lancet. This is not my opinion. Reading directly from The Lancet. Now, again, you might be wondering, well, how can this be, Mike? Like, how can the body's immune system like do this stuff? Well, they talk about this. They say right here, however, the onset of Omicron wave led to an increase in the incidence of reinfections in the natural infection cohort and the incidence of infections in the vaccinated cohorts. Nonetheless, even during the Omicron wave, natural infections were associated with lower incidence comparing the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. They say, although natural infection was more protective than vaccination, the difference in protection were smaller soon after the second dose and increased with time soon after the second dose because a lot of people said, well, natural immunity wanes. Well, you know what wanes? And again, this was controversial to say this in 2021 and early 2022. You know what wanes? Immunity from both, actually from the vaccine and natural immunity. But it turns out that even in the wake of new variants, a natural infection still is better uh, in terms of protection. Here's why. They say these findings might be explained by the different roles of mucosal immunity. We're going to break this down in a minute. Vaccination induces systemic immunity that might not be retained in the upper respiratory tracts, unlike natural infection, which induces longer term and stronger mucosal immunity at the site of virus entry and replication. 
Remember, the virus is not coming into your body through the deltoid. It's not infecting the deltoid. It's infecting the nasal pharynx and the nasal mucosa and the mucosal system of the lungs. It's, it's infecting the lungs. So when the mucosal immunity around those mucosal, mucosal tissues have previously seen the entire virus, they have a, they have a more preemptive and a, a early robust response when they are re-exposed to that pathogen. It just makes common sense. What doesn't make common sense is doubting the power of the body's immune system. This is what T cell and B cell immunity is all about. It's protecting the body after it, this is like immunologic memory. It's protecting the body from getting reinfected from pathogens that it's seen before. Now, I don't know why we ever question this because survivors of the first SARS outbreak and the MERS outbreak in the early 2000s, scientific studies that have been published in top tier journals show that healthcare workers that it, that, that treated patients with those viruses and then subsequently got infected with them, guess what? They, ha they still had immunity some 20 years later. So again, we had the data from the 1918 Spanish flu that survivors of that still had immunity some 90 years later. And that was considered, that was applauded. That was considered novel, unique, and, and interesting. Then we had data from SARS and MERS, yet we still, for some reason, People dismissed that and said, oh, that can't be. Oh, there's no way. You're only relying upon natural immunity. You better hope it works. I mean, these were literally conversations that I've had with many Uber drivers who, after I told them that I wasn't vaccinated, they stopped talking with me in the car, which was strange, with family members who are in the healthcare space who have been through medical school, through residency, through top immunologic courses. They thought that I was crazy. And now we have the studies to show, friends, we were not crazy for doubting the power of our own immune systems. We were not crazy. Even after adjusting for the differences in testing frequency between the different cohorts, that is people who have already had an infection are less likely to test, uh, they show that natural infection was still associated with a lower incidence of SARS-CoV-2 infection uh, than mRNA vaccination. So we know that natural immunity works why didn't we ever account for that in the health passes or in the colleges that made people, you know, in, in several uh, universities, I can remember Harvard Business School, they turned people's Wi-Fi off and so forth if they, if they didn't get the booster. This happened in the, um, the UC system in California. Uh, many students, if they didn't get the booster in early 2022, they could no longer buy food at the, on campus and they, their, their uh, you know, system, their online system to connect in the portals and so forth uh, through the university got turned off if they didn't receive the booster. You know, we know that college kids, a lot of them already had COVID early on and they are at low risk for getting severe disease and death anyway. Uh, and so why did we make these irrational policies? I, I, I mean, that's the, the million dollar question. Why did we do all this stuff? And, and we now have the data and where's the apology? Where's the, I'm sorry. And, and, and where's the relaxation of these rules? Because if you meet people that work for tech companies, whether it's Facebook, Amazon, Google, they still have to be up to date on all the immunizations. Well, what if they have proof that they already had COVID or they can show by testing their, their nucleocapsid antibodies. So if you've had a natural infection, that's the way to prove it. You look at your antibodies to the nucleocapsid, or if you haven't been vaccinated, you could look at your, your uh, spike protein antibodies. But if you have received the vaccine you, and you see your spike protein antibodies that, to the S protein, they're going to be high, presumably, uh, but they'll wane over time to, depending upon when you got the immunization. So um, that's one way to test to see if you've had COVID before is to look at the nucleocapsid antibody testing. Um, I think showing that you had nucleocapsid antibodies should have been proof to anyone in your family like you're safe to be around because the, the relative risk that you bring to the table is quite low in terms of having a reinfection and being symptomatic and having a high viral load because you already have mucosal immunity. So it's crazy, my friends. Let's make people think better again, especially if this ever happens in the future. That's why I keep sharing this research. And we now know that natural immunity actually works. It's protective. And when we're comparing natural immunity compared to vaccine-only immunity in the wake of new variants, well, as this study showed, natural immunity still works even amid new variants. And there's all this talk about maybe new variants emerging because, you know, there's a lot of people in China getting COVID right now. Well, if they do emerge, you shouldn't be totally scared if you've already had COVID before because your immune system makes mucosal immunity when you see the whole virus. And that's what would help prevent viral entry and replication at the actual site where that happens. Viruses are not coming in your deltoid, as I mentioned. They're coming through your nose and your respiratory tract, which is where you likely have immunity from that because seroprevalence studies show about 95% of Americans have already seen the virus by now. So, 
the fear mongering, let's let it chill out a little bit, my friends. We should be really focusing on the triple demic, which is the obesity, diabetes, heart disease epidemic, and talking about how to make people exercise or encourage exercise, incentivize eating real foods. Uh, those are things we should focus on. As always, I appreciate you tuning all the way in. Thanks for hitting the like button. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for leaving a comment. And we will catch you in a future episode down the road. Bye now.